her pieces just had a baby and we had no idea she was pregnant. Ever since that dramatic December day played out at Hacienda Healthcare, a lot has happened. But now we're getting a look at the official police report from the Hacienda investigation. We'll warn you, parts of it are disturbing. For example, when the victim who police confirm was unable to talk, move, swallow, or breathe normally was brought to the hospital, a doctor said she showed signs of being sexually active and having given birth before, suggesting this may not have been the only time the woman had a baby. Interviews with Hacienda nurses and employees indicate the woman's stomach had been bloated for four months and she had no menstruation for six months. A doctor ordered an ultrasound, but the test was declined by the diagnostic company. The police report even says that in 2002, the victim was part of a group of patients who were believed to have been touched inappropriately. Got a DNA, have the person in custody, and he's in jail. And then there's the accused, Nathan Sutherland, arrested after a DNA match. In the report, employees say after the baby was born, Sutherland called in sick for the next two to three Sundays and told one employee he was going through a rough time and asked her to pray for him. And I will tell you something that, that as an investigator, as a, as a member of our community that I look at as important is, this was an employee rather than a stranger who made his way into the facility. Police say Sutherland was a licensed practical nurse who had direct contact with the victim. Through a court order, they got DNA from Sutherland and say it matched with the victim's baby. Mr. Sutherland, may I have your full name, please? Nathan Darcy Sutherland. And your date of birth? 331-1982. Standing next to his attorney in court today, a judge reads off the serious charges he's facing. A prosecutor off camera says the state will not settle for anything less than prison time. The defendant sexually assaulted a very vulnerable adult who had no capacity to resist, no capacity to cry out, uh, no capacity to do anything other than be subject to the, what the defendant did to her. One of our, our concerns is were there other victims or how many times this occurred. Uh, we may not know how many times this occurred. The only allegation at this point is that there's DNA. So do you believe the client is innocent? I believe the client is entitled to due process and proof beyond a reasonable doubt as all defendants are. In court, Gregan told the judge there's no proof Sutherland is the guy. There's no direct evidence that Mr. Sutherland has committed these acts. Um, I know at this point there is DNA. Mr. Sutherland will have a right and have his own DNA expert. So what can you tell us about the DNA you, you were talking I about? can't tell you anything, but I haven't received discovery, but there's an allegation of DNA. That's all I can tell you at this point. And so you guys, do you plan to challenge that? Well, we, we plan to have it tested, for sure. So you will we'll run your own DNA tests? Oh, correct. Judge set Sutherland's bond at $500,000 cash, which his attorney argued is excessive, since Sutherland does not have a criminal history. All right, joining me now to talk more about this case is a person who knows a lot about Arizona law, Kirk Nermy joins us. Kirk, of course, represented Jody Arias in the state of Arizona versus Arias, also the author of uh, terrific books about this uh, trapped with Ms. Arias. Kirk, thank you so much uh, for joining us. This case, um, boy, the, the, if you're defending this defendant, um, there sure seems to be a, a lot here. Um, is it about testing the DNA independently, getting that, uh, figuring out if that is your strategy? Um, how would you go about defending in this case? Yeah, Ted, I, 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 a lot of sympathy goes out to our lawyers because this is this case is so clear. But it is really you zeroed in on the, the perfect point. It is all about the DNA. And we heard a little bit in the excerpt beforehand, the lawyer's going to seek his own DNA test. And that's exactly what we're going to see here, Ted. We're going to see a battle of DNA experts. The defense is going to say that something was done wrong in the DNA testing. And actually, Mr. Sutherland is not the person who fathered this child. Because remember, Ted, in all this horrific stuff, we have a baby here whose DNA is really the key here as well. So. What they're going to argue with their DNA experts, and it's going to be a battle of DNA experts, whether or not this was, in fact, Mr. Sutherland's baby. 
And the other thing is this sort of house of horrors where this woman was being kept. Now, it has been um, completely, uh, the management has changed. And I think he's even changed ownership. It's now reopened. But at the time, it seems as though um, there were a lot of problems inside this facility, the Hacienda Healthcare. In fact, they didn't know she was pregnant until she gave birth. Um, could you, um, I would bring this up too, I would assume if, if you're trying to defend Sutherland here that, uh, boy, this place was so poorly run, n nobody knows who did this. Well, you know, that's one possibility. It's hard to believe with all these doctors, all these nurses around, that no one noticed that this incapacitated woman was pregnant. And, you know, you could take that angle, but I don't think if I was in this case, I would, Ted. It would be straight DNA. Of course, now I don't know what the DNA results say at the independent testing. But I've also been in, in court with this particular prosecutor before. We've gone to trial together. I know he's pretty straightforward. I think he's going to be focusing on the DNA. And if I'm the defendant, I do the same thing because no matter what negligence, no matter what kind of crazy and horrific stuff, like you said, a house of horrors, no matter what what kind of crazy and horrific stuff they find, it doesn't matter if that DNA matches to this to this baby. So that's where my focus would be, and I'm sure that's where the state's focus is. Going yeah, to be. and it seems it's going to be pretty hard to fight the DNA. Um, it's not as though that you know their sample is limited, <laughs> or you know the 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 way that it was you know uh, collected was bad because there's enough samples to go around. You can do it a hundred times. Um, given that both people are still alive and well. the When you have a client like this, and, and you say you know the prosecutor in this case, are you surprised that a deal hasn't been brokered? Well, this is pretty high profile, and there's a lot of moving parts, right? You mentioned, like, all the things that could have been going on in Hacienda. And I think the horrific nature of this, and given the strength of the case, maybe the prosecutor isn't that worried about you know, resolving the case. It's not going to be a long trial. It's not going to be, we're not going to see five or six months like like I endured in Arizona courtroom. <laughs> we're going to see a pretty straightforward case of DNA experts, and that's not going to take a ton of time. And of course, I sure Mr. Cohen is very interested in putting someone like this, someone who's willing to sexually assault, allegedly, a incapacitated woman behind bars for as long as he can instead of cutting a deal and shortening that time. Yeah, and as you know quite well, the high profile nature of any case takes on a whole new meeting uh, with prosecutors and uh, everybody else involved. Kirk Derby, thank you so much. Again, uh, check out his fantastic book. Uh, he really opens up about spending time with Miss Arias. Kirk, thank you. Pre-trial conference in thank this you, case Ted. is uh, scheduled for November 2nd of this year, a trial date tentatively set for November 9th, whether or not that moves forward, given the COVID-19 situation. We'll have to wait and see. Court TV will be monitoring this very closely and we'll be there when it goes to trial.